What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at the Eufy Cam 3 S330. This is a battery powered camera which also has a built in solar panel. Taking a look at the specs, this has a 4K resolution camera with 8x zoom, a built in solar panel and spotlight, AI power tracking, two way audio, and advanced AI features thanks to the Eufy home base. So taking a look inside the box, you get two cameras. And as I said earlier, these have built in solar panels on top of each camera. Besides that, you also get the Eufy Homebase 3. This is centralized storage for these cameras and any other Eufy cameras you might own. Besides that, this also adds quite a few different AI features, which we'll go over shortly. Besides the main items, you also get two mounts, and these are for the two cameras here. You have your 24 seven monitoring Eufy sticker. You got your manual. You got some installation screws your power adapter for the home base. You have a USB-C charging cable. And then last but not least, you have this nice and thin ethernet cable, which is also for the home base. So taking a look at the camera itself, definitely on the smaller side when it comes to battery powered cameras, nice thin shape so you can fit it in a more narrow space if you need to. So looking at the front, you have your lens, which is a 4K lens. And then you have two spotlights here, which are also surprisingly bright considering how small they are. You have a few sensors up here in front. Right up top here, you have a solar panel. It looks pretty small. I wasn't sure how good this is gonna work, but as I'll show you later in the video, it does a great job keeping the camera charged. They must have sized it out and tested it with this camera because it definitely does a perfect job of being just big enough to keep this camera fully charged. Coming around back, you have your charging port, which is USB-C in case you wanna charge this manually. You have your sync button, and then right here is the screw-on point where you attach it to the mounting bracket. And then last but not least, right here you have the speaker for the camera. Overall, nice and sleek looking cameras, and they kind of look like little miniature spotlights. All right, so when it comes to storage, these cameras do not have internal storage. Instead, it's all stored right here on their home base three. So this is a centralized storage, which has 16 gigabytes of built-in storage. But if I pop this open right here, you have a hard drive slot, and this can fit a hard drive up to 16 terabytes. Realistically, I don't think you're gonna need 16 terabytes of video storage, maybe if you have 30 or 40 cameras, but I think for most people, a one to two terabyte hard drive should be more than enough. So besides being centralized storage for all your Eufy cameras, this also adds advanced AI features to any Eufy cameras you own as well. This includes advanced vehicle detection, advanced pet detection, and even facial recognition. So whether you get this kit or not, this is definitely a upgrade to your Eufy cameras that I definitely recommend getting. Coming around back, you have your sync button, and then you have two USB ports. You can plug in a external hard drive or flash drive to here as well. Ethernet port and power port. This can work with Ethernet or Wi Fi, but for the best connection and speeds possible, I definitely recommend using that Ethernet port if you have the ability. If not, then uh, it's okay to use Wi Fi as well. As far as installation goes, this was a very quick and easy process. You simply mount the bracket where you want the camera, and then the camera just attaches onto that. There's no wires or anything else required. So if you can use a screwdriver, then you can definitely install this camera as well. Right now I have mine installed in a temporary location, but once I'm sure this is where I want it, that's when I'll permanently install it with the screws instead. I love that this camera has a built-in solar panel as not only does this make installation much faster, but it also makes it a more compact and clean installation as well. Thanks to the solar panel, you'll never have to worry about charging this camera as it only needs two hours of sun every day to keep the battery fully topped off. So taking a look at some test footage, I'm definitely happy with the video quality from this camera. Just like every other Eufy camera I've tested, everything looks nice and sharp and the colors also look very accurate as well. Testing out the motion tracking, this also worked very quickly. As soon as my son walked into the frame, I got a notification that includes a snapshot as well. I love having this feature as I can see what triggered my camera before I even click on the notification. Taking a look at some night footage, you get a nice and clear image using only the IR lights, but thanks to the built-in spotlight, you can also capture a full color video, which is definitely the setting I prefer. As you can see here, the built-in light also has plenty of brightness as well. I covered it to show how it looks on and off, and despite being a small light, it definitely makes quite a difference. All right, so this is what the camera app looks like. Very simple, very clean interface, very easy to use. I've said it many times before, this is one of my favorite apps on any camera I've tested. So no matter if you're old, young, good with tech or not good with tech, 
this is something you can pick up and learn and navigate through it very easily after browsing around for just a few minutes. So when we want to access this camera, I have it right here, S330, just click on that right there. And as you can see, it shows the live feed of my yard right there. Very good quality. As I said earlier, definitely happy with how clear this is. We do have 8x zoom. So as you can see, I can zoom in quite a bit and it still looks pretty sharp and a very usable image. So this is what it looks like with the light off. And right here with the light on. So as you can see, it does make quite the difference. So coming right down here, this is where you can check your events to what triggered the camera. But besides clicking it there, you can also come here. And this will show you the events for every single camera you have from Eufy. This also includes the doorbell. Very, very convenient to have it all on one page like this because I've had other cameras in the past where if you have, a, say, a camera in front of your house, a camera in the back of your house, you got to click on them individually in the app to see what triggered them. This one, you have it all in one area. So say if someone is in front of your house and they triggered that camera, and then they walk to the back and they triggered the other camera, you can see it right here in the order that it happened, even though it's on different cameras. So nice feature to have it all consolidated there. As you can see here right now, it shows human because it detects animals, humans, and vehicles, and even detects pets. But once you set up the AI bionic mind features with the home base three, that's where this will change from saying human to stranger. Stranger will basically when it recognizes someone that isn't programmed in the camera, but with the bionic mind, it has uh, face recognition. So I haven't had a chance to set it up yet because I got to get all my family together and do it all at once to make it easier. But basically, I'll put my face in there, my kid's face, my wife's face. And when it detects them, it'll recognize their face and say, OK, uh, you know, your son was recognized in the front door. So this way, I know when I check my notification, OK, it was just my son, so I don't got to worry about it. I know he got home. But if it's somebody else, it'll say stranger. And that'll make it a little more urgent for me to click on notification and see who's there. So nice uh, advanced features there. Definitely not something I've seen with other cameras either. Like I said earlier, definitely recommend that home base, whether you need it or not. It's a good way to have all your videos centralized in one area and then also add those uh, advanced features as well. All right. So going back to the main camera interface right here, we have the streaming quality. I recommend just leaving it on auto because if you click 4K, it's always going to try to get that higher bit rate. And you don't know if your internet is slowing down for whatever reason. Maybe you're using too much internet in your house and it's going to start lagging. But with auto, it's automatically going to adjust to that and get the best quality possible while still being able to stream it at a good speed. And then right here, you can make it full screen so you can get a better view. Very helpful when you want to see a bigger image and zoom in more like that. Coming down to the bottom, we have the ability to record a video. So you see something happening while you're watching it. You go ahead and click that and it's automatically going to record it from that stream. You got snapshot microphone here. So you can speak to whoever might be near the camera. You want to say whatever you want to say. Maybe it's your relative mailman or just some random stranger. You can tell them to go away right there. You have audio on and off. And that's about it for the live feed features. Let's go ahead and look at the settings. So right up top, we have the camera on and off. Speaking of which, let me go back here to show one more thing that I really like about this camera. So when you're on the app, you can go ahead and click on this here. And you can snooze the camera. When you click that, you can put how long you want to snooze it for. And that's going to snooze your notifications. Very, very helpful because my camera is in my backyard. Sometimes I'm having a cookout or a party. If I don't put that, it's going to be sending me notifications over and over and over again. This makes it very simple to just click that, snooze it. And I'll say snooze six hours. And now for the next six hours, I'm not going to get any notifications on this camera. All right, so going back to the settings right here, we have a few different things on our motion detection settings. As you can see here, we have quite a few different detection settings. So we've got human recognition, human detection, vehicle detection, pet detection, and all other motions. If you have all of these, I definitely recommend leaving all their motions off because that's going to make the camera triggered by leaves and other shadows and things that shouldn't trigger it. So I would say just leave those on and leave that off. Sensitivity depends on where you have the camera, what's going on. Maybe you have it near a road. You don't want to put that all the way sensitive because then a car passes by. It's going to trigger that camera or just random things they don't want triggering it are going to trigger it. So usually it's usually best to leave it around three to five, depending on where you have it placed. And then you can get that figured out using this down here, which is a motion test mode. Coming up top, you have activity zone with any UFI camera you get. Definitely set this up and this is really going to reduce the amount of false alarms you get. So say if you want this part to be monitored, but not this part, you go ahead and make a zone. You can do one of these or you can do two of them if it's easier to cover the areas you need. But basically you stretch this out and get it 
around the area you want to trigger the camera. And now it's only going to monitor that area and it's going to ignore all of this over here or however you want to do it. So now it only monitor this spot and ignore all this. So in a situation, this will work great is like I said earlier, maybe there's a road somewhere in your camera view. You can set this so that it ignores the road. So no matter what goes on over here, it's not going to trigger the camera. It's only going to pay attention to this area. So like I said, definitely set that up and that's really going to save you some frustration of getting a lot of false alarms. Next up, we got Power Manager. Definitely one of my favorite tabs on this camera, one of the features I really like. So right up top, you have a few different things you can set as far as how long you want each clip to record for and what you want for notifications. Coming down here, this is one of my favorite features of this camera, and right here shows you all the solar tracking data. So as you can see here, when I first installed my camera, it was 91%. All of this was days that were raining a lot. There was very little sun. But as you can see, even though it was raining, it still maintained the camera battery at the same level. And then right here, we got a lot of sun. It stopped raining and it shot up and now it's actually charged to 100%. So even though it rained a lot, even though we didn't have a lot of sun, the solar panel was still getting enough power to maintain and keep it charged. Then if you come up here, you can see a longer graph as well. I haven't had it installed that long. So it doesn't have much information, but again, very nice to have that data there. We have spotlight settings right now. I have it on high because if it can go bright, why not? But I guess maybe if you have it in an area where we don't want too much light, you go ahead and turn that down. For me, I want all the light you can get, so I just leave it on high. Anti-theft protection, very uh, interesting feature as well. So once you get the camera installed, you just switch this on. And now if it detects the camera is being moved, it'll send you a notification to let you know something or someone is tampering with your camera so you can uh, go ahead and check that out then we have video settings which just sets your uh quality of your video how you want it to record notifications here you can set whether you want it set to just text or text and image text is more battery friendly but since this has the solar panel managing it you really don't have to worry about that i say just leave it on that one so you can get the image with the text notification then general just has the name of the camera, status LED, which is a light that will show whoever's nearby that the camera is recording or not. I don't see the point of that, so I just leave it off. Storage, as you can see, this is sending it to the home base three. And then you got mounting guide and then about device. So again, very clean app, very easy to use. And like I said, definitely one of my favorite camera apps out there. Overall, I am definitely happy with this camera. I own a few different models from Eufy and they all work great without any issues. So if you happen to be shopping for a new camera, I would highly recommend taking a look at this one here, which again is the S330 Eufy Cam 3. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.